Hello, welcome to Look Around. A shorter programme this evening with the football coming up here on ITV. Well, first tonight, a senior firefighter has been jailed for stealing tens of thousands of pounds worth of equipment. 50-year-old Michael Todd Hunter stole kit, including helmets, hoses and defibrillators from Cumbria Fire and Rescue Service, and he sold some of the items on eBay. Emma Sweeney reports from Carlisle Crown Court. Michael Todd Hunter stole more than £50,000 worth of vital equipment over the course of 17 years while working for Cumbria Fire and Rescue Service. Protective clothing, search lamps, axes and even hand sanitizer were among those items found in the 50-year-old's garage. But perhaps the most striking fact about this case is that as COVID gripped the country last year, Mr Todd Hunter, seen here in 2018, was attempting to make a profit. He was selling respiratory items, including half face masks through the online auction site eBay. In a statement today, group manager Stuart Hook said the effects of Todd Hunter's offending had been far-reaching and still ongoing, as well as the significant financial cost colleagues had felt let down. Today, Mr Todd Hunter was sentenced to 16 months in prison. Emma Sweeney, ITV News, Carlisle Crown Court. Police investigations are continuing after a man was killed and another seriously injured in a Borders Road crash. It happened on the A6091 Melrose Bypass at around half past nine yesterday morning. A 42-year-old was pronounced dead at the scene. A 53-year-old with serious injuries was taken by ambulance to Edinburgh's Royal Infirmary. A South of Scotland hospitality boss says the introduction of vaccine passports would put extra pressure on businesses. Covid cases are still rising and it's expected that vaccine passports will be needed to go into nightclubs or large events in Scotland from later this month. It might even be extended to bars and restaurants in the future. Matty Sutton report. As they prepare for tonight's service at this restaurant and hotel in Lockerbie, further uncertainty is back on the menu. We already have the confusion at the moment with face coverings and, and track and trace because in England and Wales don't have to have that. When people come across to Scotland here, we have to wear a face covering and we're still having to do track and trace by law. So adding this into the mix as well is just putting more um, pressure on business owners. If Parliament approves the move, vaccine certificates will need to be shown by anyone wanting to go to a nightclub or attend a mass gathering in Scotland. And the government has not ruled out extending their use to bars and restaurants. At the moment, hospitality groups, football clubs and venues have no idea about what infrastructure will be in place or if they'll get any help to introduce this. It's just another example of the shambolic last minute knee-jerk decision making of this government. We will do this properly, we will do this in the way that people uh, have a right to expect of their government. Um, and of course uh, we see across a range of uh, different sectors yesterday an understanding of the reasons for this. Nobody wants any form of restrictions but while we have this virus, we have to determine uh, the least restrictive way of keeping people safe. The Liberal Democrats say they firmly oppose the move on principle. For the first time, Scots will have to provide private medical data to strangers to access freedoms in our society. Vaccines are the way out of the pandemic, but vaccine passports are not. There's no time limit and an open door for expansion. So can I ask the First Minister, where does this stop? We are still in the grip of a pandemic. This is a highly infectious virus and therefore doing nothing over the next period is not an option. We've got to stem transmission and therefore it becomes a question of how do we do that in the least restrictive, most proportionate way. The first vaccine certificates are likely to be issued later this month. The prospect of extending their requirement to bars and restaurants has been left on the table. Matty Sutton, ITV News. And viewers in Scotland can see more on that in Representing Border at 10.45 tonight. Now, the sale of a farm belonging to Newton Rigg Agricultural College is on the verge of completion. The college near Penrith closed back in July and there had been fears that it would bring to an end land-based learning in the county. The charity that's bought Lowbeckside Farm says it will keep it as an educational facility. Our reporter Ralph Blunson has been to meet the new owners. 
Yes, welcome to Low Beckside Farm. We're at Mung Grisdale, about halfway between Penrith and Keswick. This was one of two working farms attached to Newton Rigg College. The college itself is about 13 miles from where we're standing. Six weeks ago, it was announced that this farm was going to be taken over by the Ernest Cook Educational Trust. Well, I'm joined today by the Trust's Chief Executive, Dr Victoria Edwards, and Susie Granger, an outdoor training officer for the Trust. Um, Dr Edwards, let me start by asking, important days for the Trust, aren't they? Really important days. We are very close to completing on the purchase of the farm. Are you excited? Extremely excited, a little daunted, um, taking over our first farm ever uh, as a farming venture. Really keen to keep it as a working hill farm, but we're working with the National Park as well to enhance the biodiversity on it, and most importantly, get people learning here. So we'll be having those uh, young people who might have gone to Newton Rigg, we hope to be able to offer them the opportunity to do practical land-based skills on the farm. How important is it that this remains as an educational facility? Well, for us, it's vital. Our sole, education, our sole charitable purpose is education. So that was our purpose of buying the farm. Um, so it will remain uh, as an educational resource. Susie Granger, let me, start, let me ask you, I mean, you already have very strong links with this area. Tell me about that. Yes, we currently work at Lowther Estate just outside Penrith. Uh, we run a variety of courses there, like John Muir Awards, uh, lots of land-based vocational skills that we're doing, and that's something we hope to move over here to Low Beckside as well. So this is an important addition to what you've got? Absolutely. It's a step up as well because we're now able to offer a full qualification here. So it's not just an add-on to an existing course that they're doing, but we're running our own full courses here alongside some of the local colleges. Now this is, as you indicated, the first time you've bought a farm and you'll be farming for yourself. That presents new challenges. First time we've farmed. We, we've, we've owned farms before but always had tenant farmers farming them for us. We feel for educational purposes we need to do this one ourselves. So I learnt yesterday I've become the keeper of the sheep, uh, which apparently means I'm in charge of the welfare of 400 sheep. So a little daunting, but we've been offered so much help and support locally that I know it's going to be a great success. Very quickly, how do you see the future? Oh, bright. We'll, we, this place will be teeming with young people, learning skills, enjoying the work as they go, and hopefully a real community resource that we can involve lots of people in. OK, thank you for your time today. Just to let you know that, obviously, that's positive news for this farm, but as for the rest of Newton Rigg College, we've heard today that it's a herd of cows, uh, a prize-winning herd of cows. They are being prepared for sale at auction over the next few weeks. OK, Ralph Blonson reporting there. Um, some sport now, and it's congratulations again to Borders wheelchair athlete Sammy Kinghorn, who has won her second Paralympic medal in the space of 24 hours. The 25-year-old from Gordon took silver in the T53 400 metres to go alongside the bronze she claimed in yesterday's 100 metre final. Meanwhile, Libby Clegg has announced her retirement from the sport. Libby from Newcastleton is already a double Paralympic champion after winning two golds at the Rio Games five years ago. She finished third in her 200 metres heat in Tokyo this morning, failed to make the semi-finals. Cumbria's Anna Nicholson completed her Paralympic debut with a sixth place finish in the F35 shot put final. She threw a season's best of just over eight metres in Tokyo. She says she's already looking ahead to the next games in Paris. In football, stand by for a great quote from Carlisle United head coach Chris Beach coming up. Uh, he says his side shouldn't fear any opponents as they gear up for this weekend's fixture. United are at home to Salford City in League Two on Saturday. Salford have the division's biggest budget, but they're a point below Carlisle, and the United boss is not one for negative talk. I'm not an underdog. I'm not an overdog. I'm an ambitious coach, manager with some great lads and staff and players and we're giving our best for our community and our club that pay us and that we represent you supporters and we share it together and we're really looking forward to be able to do that on Saturday. Pictures are never great from Carlisle's webcam aren't they but the quotes are worth listening to. He's not an underdog, he is an overdog says Chris Beach and here is another man with a proud and positive mental attitude Cumbrian hiker James Forrest James is from Cockermouth and he's just set a new record for climbing the highest peaks in England Scotland and Wales he also walks every mile in between them Ryan Dollard went to meet him James Forrest's passion for walking and the countryside saw him move to the Lake District five years ago 
Since then, he's set himself a series of epic challenges to push his endurance to the limit. His latest is perhaps his greatest, a 500 mile trek taking in the highest peaks in England, Scotland and Wales and every step in between. A journey where the highs and lows weren't all underfoot. Perhaps the most amazing moment was making it to Snowdon, the final of the three peaks, knowing that I'd battled through all that hardship, that I'd put all those long, hard miles in and made it to the finish line. So there was a real palpable sense of achievement then, which was, which was really amazing. The low moment was actually at the bottom of Snowdon. I fell ill with sunstroke. I was really, really struggling. I was exhausted. I was nauseous. I was just in a really bad place. And I'd come so close to the finish line and felt like I might not make it to the end. And that was quite a kind of crushing low. But I managed to compose myself, find a bit of strength from somewhere and get those final few miles completed. He completed the challenge in 16 days, 15 hours, 39 minutes and 51 seconds, a brand new record, and one he welcomes anyone to have a crack at. You know what, I'd, I'd absolutely welcome anyone to give it a go, I think it's an amazing adventure, I think you'll go on a, an awesome journey through the UK, see so much of the UK, everything from mountains to cities to industrial landscapes and I just encourage anyone to give it a go. If anyone's able to beat it, good on them. They can go for it. And I did love it, so maybe I'll come back and have another go. <laughs> James already holds the record for the fastest solo walk of all 214 Wainwrights, but his next challenge remains a mystery for now. But it's safe to say he won't be hanging up his boots anytime soon. Ryan Dollard, ITV News, Cockermouth. James Forrest, a man undaunted by the weather. Here's the forecast with Ross. He's chucking it down. Might as well get on with them jobs, Gary. Wipes in the bin, though. Oh, good lad. United Utility sponsors ITV Border Weather. Hello, good evening. High pressure in control of our weather at the moment. It's been with us for a good few days now. Keeping things settled, the weather's been quite samey through the last few days. Plenty of sunny spells in the west, more cloud in the east. Through the next couple of days into the weekend, sunny spells settled. It is going to stay mostly dry. That area of high pressure still refusing to go anywhere. It's just locked over the UK at the moment. The more unsettled conditions being diverted around that. Having said that, it has trapped quite a bit of cloud underneath it. It has been pestering eastern areas over the last a few days but certainly further west the best of any sunshine the best of those temperatures as well so this setup will continue as we head through the rest of today the clouds slowly pushing its way further west as we head into those early hours some murky conditions developing and underneath those clearer skies temperatures will be dropping right down four or five degrees in for our towns some of our urban areas so definitely a fresher feel as we go into tomorrow morning so tomorrow, again, west tends to be best when it comes to the sunshine. Further east, the cloud is going to be coming and going. But even here, it is thinning, it's breaking. We're seeing those brighter skies developing, certainly as we head into the afternoon. Inland, those top temperatures, pretty similar to what we saw today. Highs of around 21 degrees. Out towards the east coast, with the breezes coming in from the North Sea, though, it is going to feel just that bit fresher. Now, through Friday, and as we make our way into the weekend, again, that high pressure is set to dominate for now. It's going to last into the weekend for Sunday, though later on we could well see some rain arriving from the west but ahead of that pr plenty of fine weather in the sunshine again those temperatures pretty much climbing up into the low 20s and a bit more cloud on the way as we end the weekend united utility sponsors itv border weather he's doing us now Stop, fella thank you ross and that is it from us have a good evening enjoy the football we'll see you tomorrow bye for now